The fires that burned in Oregon in 2020 were unprecedented. In Talent, almost a year later, there are still piles of rubble. They're reminders of the 1.2 million acres burned across the state and more than 5,000 homes and buildings that were destroyed. Over half of those homes, 2,500, burned to the ground in one county. I had to rush and get both kids in the car. And I still remember like it was yesterday, I was shaking, my daughter was crying, mommy, what's going on, what's going on? And I was shaking, I just kept telling myself, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, as I was shaking. The memory of the Almeda fire that tore through communities in Southern Oregon almost a year ago is still fresh. And the impact on Anna Pantoja's family is immeasurable. Emotionally, it's been really hard. Um, not only for myself, but for my daughter. Her daughter, Genesis, is just six, diagnosed with PTSD from the fire. So she's in therapy now. Um, I'm in therapy. These days, Pantoja says her anxiety is easily triggered, especially with the stress of finding stable housing and trying to get help from FEMA. Other fire survivors, like Anna D'Amato, are also having a tough time. When it gets smoky or there, the temperature gets a certain way and the winds start blowing the way it was that day, we sort of go back to that day and like, oh, is it gonna happen again? Can it happen again? D'Amato says mentally, she's just not the same. I find it's, it's still hard to focus sometimes. And there are things that I really can't remember before the fire. The anxiety also extends to first responders in the area. Before we would expect to run a call, but now we're like, we're not just expecting to run a call, we're almost expecting the worst every time. I'm a captain here at Fire District 5. Aaron Bustard with Jackson County Fire District 5 remembers the Almeda fire moving quickly, fueled by dry vegetation and strong wind. It was kind of overwhelming because we never seen anything like it. On staff that day, were just nine firefighters. I had asked, I was like, you know, when are the resources getting here? And we were just told there's, there's nothing coming. It felt pretty defeating. The lack of resources due to multiple fires burning across Oregon. It, it was frustrating, you know, and very frustrating not being able to do something. You know, we still look at areas of our community that residents haven't been able to come back to. In the end, roughly 2,500 homes burned in the Almeda fire. Add to the constant reminders of what happened, the guilt many first responders feel. I mean, we all felt so bad about what happened and we felt, you know, we felt almost like we failed. But Bustard says mental health resources through the firefighters union helped a lot. And there are other resources, one of them, the Red Cross, which has licensed mental health professionals who volunteer their time responding to disasters across the U.S. We have about 15 active disaster mental health professionals, uh, volunteers in the Oregon and Southwest Washington area. And then nationally, um, there are several hundred. During last year's fires, we probably had maybe 30 or 35 folks from other states coming in to help us, rotating in and out. Carol Gross says the Red Cross often works with county mental health resources, and FEMA also provides mental health help. Over the past year, FEMA allocated more than $3 million for crisis counseling in Oregon alone. A year-round resource is the Disaster Distress Line, the number right there on your screen, 1-800-985-5990. It's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for anyone dealing with a disaster or the aftermath of one. It's got counselors who can cater to more than 100 different languages. Back in Southern Oregon, D'Amato, who is also a trained therapist, is now rebuilding her home. Her familiarity with trauma and mental health has helped her get through tough times. Stopping and taking some really deep breaths. Do you do four or five of those and you really can feel the anxiety and the stress sort of leaving your body? So that's one thing, going for a walk, talking to friends. Pantoja hasn't found a technique that works for her quite yet, but she finds comfort in being prepared. We're ready. We, we have all the important documents and we know where they're at. For now, she's still dealing with the mental and emotional fallout associated with the fire, and she knows it'll be a long road. 
and it's gonna take more than a year to, I don't know, have our normal lives back. In Southern Oregon, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News.